Okay guys, hey thanks for coming back to the channel. Gotta gotta start working on this old girl and see if we can get her running good. So let's check it out. Welcome to Hidden Valley Homestead, where my wife Olivia and I escaped the city to homestead our off-grid property in Idaho. This is our journey. All right, so we've been working on this old girl today. I had a friend come over and uh, wasn't charging the battery. And so I thought that it was the alternator. So I put a new alternator in, wasn't the alternator. What, what I found out is that it wasn't exciting. And these two wires right here are the field that generate to make sure that this thing generates a, a magnetic field and starts producing electricity. This is the main feed line or the main power line that directly goes to the battery, which this is the charge line to the battery. This is a ground wire. This is a feed wire, and then this is the uh, also uh, uh, an ignition wire, and this all goes through the wire harness and up to the new voltage regulator. This does not have an internal voltage regulator. It is an external voltage regulator, and there is no relay. So that's important, you guys, because the updated information that they send you with this new updated one, there's only four wires coming out of here, and the wire harness has five wires. So let me show you guys really quick. For those of you that are, that are updating and having problems with your charging system, this is a 1974 John Deere 350B, okay? And now the way you wire this thing up, and I verified it, showing 14.3 volts coming out of the charge wire, okay? You've got the red constant, which has power. You've got the ground. You've got the green wire, which is the field wire. And then you have the blue wire, which is your ignition wire. So when you guys are testing your plug, these two wires come are going into the plug. You need to test these. Your black, your red, and this wire right here are gonna match up to the three in here. Red goes to red, black goes to black. This is the ignition wire that goes to the blue wire. This is the one that has power when the ignition is turned on. This one has power all the time. These are your two field wires. One is a yellow wire and one is a green wire. They both have to be jumpered together or connected and connected to the single green wire out of the voltage regulator. When you do that, you will get 14.3 volts. It will excite the alternator and turn on the charging and you will charge your battery. So guys, uh, with with these old dozers, uh, old iron, John Deere forum, John, jdcrawlers.com is a great forum. If you guys are looking for kind of, for that kind of information, it's a great site to go to. And that's where I got the, the, the um, I got a couple of the questions answered, but then the updated voltage regular that I got from John Deere actually came with instructions and it gives you all the different, there's four different pages depending on what model you have, if you've got a relay or no relay, uh, a, a regulator in the, in the alternator or not, depending on, on the year that you have. In my case, there was no regulator in the alternator and there's no relay. So you have to jump the wires in, in a specific way in order to get that alternator to charge. So I hope that helped. Um, the next issue that I've got with this thing is I'll turn it on and she'll, she'll just die. So once again, jdcrawlers.com is a great forum and I followed some threads on there and a lot of guys are having the same problems. Uh, I already cracked all of the solenoid nuts on the top. I also verified that the fuel filter was fine. So let me show you this. So my mechanical fuel filter uh, obviously broke down a long time ago. When I bought this dozer, they had put on an electric fuel pump. I verified that the this thing is working just fine. And here is the fuel filter. I did take out the fuel filter and make sure that fuel is coming out. Uh, as soon as I took this off and turned this thing on, fuel was just pouring out of the hole. And the fuel filter is not clogged. And I verified that. So let me turn this on, you guys can hear it. So you heard the fuel pump slow down because it's building up pressure and it's trying to pump and it can't because there's pressure in the lines. Now let's start the thing up. Oh 
she sounds glorious, doesn't she? <laughs> yeah, but she keeps dying though. And uh, I have a good, I, good reason to believe it is a clogged return line. There, she's dying. I went ahead and shut it off. Now I did disconnect this line right here. This is, comes directly from the fuel pump. I did crack this nut and fuel is pouring out of there. So it's not a clogged supply line to the injection pump. And then these are the three lines that go to the three injectors up here. There's one, there's the other one, here's one there. I did crack all three of those while it was running and fuel is coming out of there. So. I don't have a problem with fuel getting to my cylinders and the injectors. However, there is a return line right here. I haven't checked that yet. And I suspect there's a couple different places that say that this line is probably clogged. There is a petcock valve in this section right here. And if you take this out and remove that petcock valve or inspect it and clean it, put it back together, and then the return fuel line, uh, if, and you can see that this hose right here, I've got a crack on that hose right there, so I think I'm gonna replace all of these rubber hoses. They don't seem like they're really leaking. Uh, they're not leaking or anything, but there's a good chance that that line is clogged. Another issue that somebody brought up was whether it was vapor locked, and I've tried to run it with the cap off, and the cap does not have a super tight seal on it. So it's not a problem getting fuel to here, uh, but what's probably happening is that that return line, or it's, it's possible that the pet cock underneath the tank is clogged, uh, but the return line is causing it to uh, freeze up and not flow properly. So that's gonna be the next thing to check. So let's look at that and I'll see what happens. Okay, there's a couple of things I'm gonna check first before I start tearing apart my fuel lines. And uh, there were two different posts on jdcrawlers.com that talk about the injection pump. There's a little window on the side that has two screws and one of two things will happen. The one guy was talking about a 450 injection pump, which should be almost the same as the one that's on here. He said, if you loosen those screws and release the pressure on the side of the housing, uh, then you need to repair the injection pump. The other guy said, if you take those little screws out and you see some little black chips in there, then that means that the little check valve is clogged. Uh, but either one, both of them said, start it up, loosen the screws, see what it does. One guy says if the engine speeds up and runs fine, you need to repair your injection pump. The other guy says if the, the, the engine will run, um, it's because it's clogged. Don't know which one it is yet. One guy is talking about the 450, this is a 350. So I think it's the same pump or very similar. Let's try it out. Okay guys, here is the little window with the two set screws on the side of the injection pump. I'm gonna fire the, this thing up and I'm gonna, you're gonna listen to this thing die and we're gonna loosen those screws and see what happens. So you guys saw me turn the little screw and release the pressure off that little cover plate and it sped up. The, uh, the RPM sped up and it started to run fine. So I've got to investigate why it's doing that. Uh, I've got a bad feeling I'm going to have to re rebuild my injection pump. But I know they make uh, kits for that. So I'm going to look into that and see what's up. So if that's why this thing is dying, um, I've repaired the electrical. So now I'm going to be able to charge the battery. My injection pump, otherwise this thing runs great. Got a great exhaust, everything else runs fine. The steering clutches work great. Got to tighten up one track. And I still have that pesky oil leak out of the transmission. So that'll be the next thing to check out. So uh, stay tuned for that guys. Um, I'll let you know here in a minute what is going on. Let me take that cover off and see if I got any anything clogging that line. You guys see that okay? All right, here we go. Don't lose the nut.
Oh. There's some little black chunks in there. Check that out, you guys. Oh, interesting. Do you guys see those little black chunks I scooped off there? Okay, let me put this cover back on. A little bit of fuel's coming out. Ain't no big thing. You guys saw when I took that little cover off, those little tiny black chunks. They were in there. That's what the guy on JD Crawler said. That if you got some little black chunks in there, that the little ball check valve that on the return line, uh, you got to take out that little ball and the spring. And I think that's right here. I believe that's the ball check valve. And he said to take that, that little ball in the spring. But let's fire it up and see what it does. So good. Okay, so you guys heard that. Let's take off that. Uh, and it, it, this thing is kind of run a little bit rough at some times. I have a feeling. I have a feeling it's because that might be leaking right here. So I'm getting a little bit of air and that goes to one of the injectors. So I bet you if I tighten this up, that'll actually help. Uh, so I'm gonna take this old cover off again and see if we can see if some more little black specks come out There's one of the black specks right there There you guys see that black speck that is uh, Probably some plastic or something from the pet petcock valve. So let's take that thing apart <laughs> Let's take this thing up off again and see. Let's see if I get some more pieces. Holy smokes, you guys. Look at all that. Look at all those little pieces right there. Wow. Okay, so I got a bunch of debris in there and uh, I think it's the petcock valve that has probably disintegrated. And the one guy said to take out, just take out the petcock valve. Turn line. Doesn't seem to be a whole lot of fuel coming out of here. So there's a spring and a spring and ball in here. All right, let's check this out, you guys. There is a spring and ball in here. So there is a little ball in here. And it does look all clogged up in there. I don't know how to get that out. And uh, so this looks like the same thread, you guys. So if I take this piece out with the ball and the petcock, or with the ball and spring, and then just put this piece in, that's what the guy was saying, was take out the, the spring and the ball. It's a stop valve. We're gonna put this in without the stop valve. And I got the return line, I'm putting that back on. Let's check it out. Put it back in. 
dying now. That's pretty amazing. Okay guys, that was pretty amazing. That was a great little fix for the why this thing was dying. There is a return line check valve that gets clogged and doesn't allow the fuel to bypass what the, what the injectors are not using uh, to go back to the engine and, I'm sorry, to the tank. And so if that return line is clogged, then you're gonna basically get a vapor lock or uh, basically fuel is not going to pass through. And so that's a problem and that's why it was dying. So um, I've got the fuel figured out. That's pretty awesome. I've got clean fuel coming through my, through my filter. My tank is not clogged and uh, I'm gonna still replace all of those lines. Those lines right there, I gotta replace those. Um, they're a little bit old. They're still soft. They're not super, super hard but uh, it'd be wise to go ahead and replace these anyway with some fresh rubber hoses and then replace that return line that goes down underneath the floorboards. Uh, it goes right up underneath there and, and goes to the return line into the tank. The tank is in the, in the very back right there. So as you can see, I had the, the cap off just to make sure I wasn't getting vapor locked through the back of the cap. The cap so. so there you go, guys. That was the culprit right here. This little check valve was clogged and was not allowing anything to come through. And that was that was a problem, so. Hopefully that helps you guys. If uh, you guys have any other ideas uh, to make sure to keep these old girls running, leave me a comment in the bottom. Feel free to email me. If you guys like the, uh, the content, hit that like button and um, subscribe and we'll keep bringing you stuff. The next item on the repair list for the old girl are the leaks. I've got the charging system fixed, the fuel line fixed, now I've got the hydraulic leak underneath. That'll be the next one. I gotta get up underneath and pull those belly pans off and then we'll take a look and see what's there. So guys, thank you for watching. See you guys on the next video. I'm excited, get the old girl going.